Alright, welcome back guys to uh, another Solid Shell Security video on uh, the cPanel series and today we are going to be talking about uh, decreasing the time needed to load a web page, pack more websites onto a server, and just to get that extra enhancement to performance on your web server. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about a few little things and this is just the tip of a nutshell. There's just so much stuff involved in actually tweaking, tuning, and performing a web server that this series, for this episode, we are only going to talk about uh, bringing in a reverse proxy on the front, which is pretty much, I forgot to draw a diagram, but uh, in a sense, let's see if we can do this real quick. Uh, for the web server, let's say we have the incoming traffic right here. They're going to hit... Uh, the proxy up front and that is going to serve the static files so static files will just go directly to the static files however if it's a dynamic request then it's going to hit Apache which is the back end and then it's going to go to the PHP file or whatever the case may be so what we have happening is the request hit the reverse proxy which serves files and static content a lot lot faster than say Apache. Um, Apache can be a little heavy and it can take up lots of memory and be kind of slow. So what we want to do is we want to set up a front-end proxy and this would just serve the request to Apache and then Apache would serve the dynamic content. Uh, there's a few options out there. Um, uh, first of all let's talk about Unixes. Um, there's actually three that I actually know of. I forgot to bring in the third one. Uh, I really haven't used it. I've read some things about it. Supposedly it's a takeoff of Unixes. I really don't know. But Unixes is not a free one. It's about five, six dollars a month as we can see here. And what it's using is it's using Varnish as a front-end proxy. And what it's doing is it's caching the static content and the memory and it's going to serve that. So instead of actually even having to hit the file, it's going to serve it directly out of memory. So you gain a lot more performance. That means Apache and the server is not going to be locked down by a lot of income requests because they're being served out because, oh, I've seen this file. You know, let's serve it out already. So it's a lot faster and it really, really can help a lot. So you might want to actually look into using this one. Um, there's a free one. And. I might not say this right, I think it's Nginx, or I forget, there's some article on how like so many people don't even say it correctly, but I like to call it Nginx, I've been calling it that for years, so if I'm saying it wrong, you know, you guys can correct me, there is an article, I just haven't found it again, but anyway, uh, this one is actually free, and it's pretty maintained, we've used it, we've messed around with it a lot, uh, we haven't actually used the latest version. Uh, but using it on cPanel, there may be a few things you have to do manually. Uh, you do need to make sure you have the mod QoS installed. Uh, this goes for either one, for like either Varnish or Nginx. Uh, if you're going to use a front end proxy, you need to make sure you have at least mod QoS. Is it mod QoS? I'm trying to remember what the mod is. Um, it might be, I think it is. But if not, someone correct me on the forums. But what that mod does is it's it's taking the real IP and passing it through otherwise you're going to get the server IP and then everyone's going to have the exact same IP because the reverse proxy is going to use the server IP when it goes to Apache so you want to make sure that you've got Apache set up to recognize the IP that's being sent over because Nginx Furnish will actually send the real IP over. You just have to make sure Apache is set up to do that. And we're going to talk about that as well. But for now, we're just going to end up tossing in this one just to use it. Uh, I believe they may or may not have fixed, I don't know, it may have just been a glitch, but when working with dedicated IPs, uh, there's been times we've actually had to go in and actually edit the vhost files directly then restart Nginx to actually bring up the new dedicated IP. It may be a glitch, it may have been fixed, I really don't know, but there is some manually edits you may have to actually do um, because we're tossing on a, a tweak, a modification or something on the cPanel and it's not really officially supported and it changes how things are done, so a few things you have to understand may have to be done. It adds overhead, so just so you know, you may have to do some extra work on it, but anyway, uh, we're going to go over here and copy all this. 
Um, so we're just going to go ahead and just run this into command line and bring up. Let's see here, no, nope, that's not it. And here we go. And just clear all this out. Okay, well, first of all, just cd into that directory. We're going to wget. This is actually really, really pretty easy. Um, so, as you can see, it's as simple as just you know copying and pasting these commands just to install. It's very easy. There's not too much involved with using this, so it's a, it's a quick alternative. Um, if you want to actually use something to boost performance on the web server and stuff, it's it actually does help too with like a lot of traffic. Uh, we've definitely noticed a big big change with it, but as you can see, it's really simple to install and. Okay, we need to actually go generate a key. So we're going to go WHM cluster. Where's cluster at? Here we go. Cluster set the remote access key. We're just going to generate a key like that and come back here. There we go. So, all right, so it's going to start and so on. And it's going to install itself under the plugin section once again with WHM. Uh, you really don't have to actually ever use that. It's, it runs in the background. When sites get created, set up, it automatically creates the vhost. Everything just runs on its own. It's really, really automatic. So there's really nothing you have to do. Uh, this is actually probably going to go faster on your server. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but this one has been really, really glitchy. Um, and apparently, we've got an issue here. Um, I wonder if it's because we don't have Python installed. Let's check real quick. See if it went to. It's, it shows it. Engine service is down. Okay, let's try bringing engine. I would just do it here just for the heck of it. Okay, it says engine is. Huh, okay, let's see real quick. Let's see if we got engine running. And Suppose it should automatically also change the part numbers for Apaches. If I do not see Nginx running, let's just see real quick. Yeah, you guys are getting a crash course on uh, debugging as well. Uh, yeah, stuff like this actually does happen. So, okay, so we've got... I forget what part Nginx... Let's just see real quick. Yeah. And it will install under Etsy Nginx. So if you want to know where it saves as, and this is the Nginx uh, control file. This is the basic one. Uh, you may actually want to come in through and actually change some of these things, like gzip, it automatically is doing images. You really do not want to uh, zip the images. It's kind of pointless and silly, so you will have to come through and do some edits here, which we will. Um, for now, I want to know why. Yeah, Nginx is not running. Okay, says it started there. Okay, Nginx is running. It may have just been a glitch. I don't know. I've actually not used this version of Nginx. I think we still like run 3x or something like that. I mean, it's very stable. There's really no reason or need to actually have to upgrade to the latest version all the time. Uh, if it works, it works. You know, don't touch it, don't break it, you know, just let it run. So, but we'll see if we got it running here. Okay, so that's running. Okay, so we, at least we know it's now working. Uh, okay, that's good. So let's just go in here and just to show you the ETC Nginx. And the VHOS files are going to be kept under here. Uh, at least it's, hold on. May have got that. Okay, we don't have any VHOS, that's why, but. That is exactly where the vhost files are going to actually be kept. Um, the proxy information for like sending the IPs to Apache is going to be there, but let's just make sure we got both running here, which we should. Um, blue, blue, blue. Up we go. Okay. So what we've got is we have Nginx running on 80, and then Apache, I'm trying to remember what. It defaults. I think it defaults Apache to. All right. 
Let's just check something real quick. I thought that is where. Um, is it? Oh, wait. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so let's see the Apache. It should be set to run. It's still running. Eight. Actually, I think I have to reset that manually. That's what it was. I uh, it's been so long since I've set this up. I kind of remember all this being done automatically. So that's all on Haiti. Change the V hosts. You know. All right, you're listening on eighty eighty. So I guess there is actually some manually edits. Um, either that or the install script did not actually happen correctly. Um, I just been so long since I've actually really had to use this. I don't remember it ever breaking, so I want to do service HTTPD restart. And I'm going to restart Nginx here to make sure it's. Okay. And let's check, make sure we got everything running. Oops. Okay, we've got Nginx running, we've got Apache running. Let's check part numbers real quick. Yep, you guys are getting a complete crash course and uh, debugging and stuff. So if you have issues, this should actually help you figure them out. All right, let's see what we've got. We've got uh, Apache is running on 8080, which is good. Question is, where is Nginx? This is where it helpfully use the grep command, but apparently I don't seem to see it running. Hmm, alright, we'll double check that real quick. This usually, this has actually never happened, but okay. So if you want to see if Apache is running, you can go up here and type in 8080, and it'll take you directly to the Apache. So if you ever want to bypass Nginx, you just have to put the Apache part number in, and you can do that. Now, if you want to actually prevent abuse from people actually hitting the Apache number, I mean the Apache part, you can firewall it so it can only be accessed locally. So if someone actually somehow found it, they can't launch an attack directly on Apache. So you can actually firewall it so it can only be accessed locally. Now, that's what we recommend you do because the whole point of it is you don't want Apache being accessed because, you know, the whole reason we're putting Nginx is, is to basically take the load and the attacks off Apache because Apache would just fall to the attack pretty quickly. Alright, so let's go back into the Nginx file and see what is going on. Alright, actually I don't... Alright, you know what, okay, I think I know what's going on here, okay. Actually, might be... Right, I'm going to pause the video real quick, I'm going to check something out. Okay, we're back. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what I did to fix that. If you remember back when I did the install, we had that Python error. So I looked it up, and apparently it was actually a common thing uh, with Nginx. And what happened was, is it didn't have the right module installed. So I guess this was like a minimal install of Linux. So what you had to do is you had to run the Python fix. And after you run the Python fix, it installs the module, and then you run the install. So what I recommend doing, uh, just actually also run the Python fix, then run the install. And then once you run the install, everything installs correctly. So you see I ran that, blah, blah, ran the install, installed everything. Then, then it created everything. Uh, the other issue was it did not create the vhost. So I went ahead and actually went in here and just created a default vhost. Uh, so pretty much what happened was they didn't create the vhost, I just made the vhost. But what I did was listen on 80 with the server IP and then when I proxy pass it back to 8081, it actually did go through Apache and it changed all the 80s to 8081. So now Apache listens on 8081. And it went ahead and generated create everything. So everything would actually come out of the box like I originally said and thought. We just had that one little issue. And if you actually have 
uh, actual domains and V hosts on the system, it will go ahead and generate them and create them. So it all works. But anyway, it's going to pass the stuff here. So if you actually want to get more creative and really take advantage of Nginx and the configuration setup, you can get very, very complicated, very, very fine tuned. But this is just the quick, simple V host. So it did, in fact, install, it ran, everything's perfectly. As you can tell, we go up here and you know, refresh and okay. Main and of course, if you want to check Apache, you can always go here and do 881 and there's Apache. Okay, so it runs. We're all good. Now, let's talk about some other stuff. Um, if any time you want to check the log, you can do that and clean up. Um, you will actually really want to make sure you automate this. Uh, really recommended. Otherwise, your TMP will and will get completely filled and it will crash the system. Um, nothing's going to be the right. It's going to cause some issues. So make sure you do that. You want to make sure you get the temp being cleaned out. Now, if you ever need to rebuild the vhost, something doesn't work right, you can just do that. So that covers all that. Now, what we want to do is show you that you can actually put in uh, the proxy cache. And this right here is what allows Nginx to cache all the static files into memory. Well, not so much memory, but you get the idea. But I'm going to walk through all. So proxy cache is going to cache the proxy cache right there. We're saying the size, the limits, how long it remains active. Now this is the main important stuff. We want to cache error pages for about five minutes and everything else that has a valid 200 status code for about an hour. And we're setting the key which is basically HTTP or HTTPS, the host, and then the request URL. This is to prevent any chance of the cache hitting another cache file. So we're basically giving a unique key to prevent overlapping. Now, if you're going to set this up, there's some other little things you have to fine tune, but it's pretty simple. All you have to do is let's find my shell here. Go, we go into edit the Nginx config file, which you can actually do. And what we want to do is we put this under its own little thing down here. Go to insert mode. And then we just want to toss in. And then we just restart Nginx and we'd have her have the cache going. Uh, this would actually increase stuff a lot. So if you really, really want to start caching a lot of static content, you can do that. Uh, there's a lot of other tuning aspects you want to do. Um, you can change the Z-zip level from a 1 to a 9. 6 is pretty good. Uh, you want to make sure you take out the images and the G-zip types. There's no reason to put images in there. I mean, you can if you want, but it's not really recommended. I mean, if you've got a very, very, very fast, crazy CPU, then okay, yes, you can do that. Uh, the other thing is you may want to change the amount of workers. Uh, two is pretty good. Um, you can also change the affinity to them. So if you want Nginx to run at a higher level, you can do that too. You can also assign the workers to specific processors. So if you have like eight processors, eight workers, you can assign each one to specific CPU. So it can really, really operate threaded. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff you can actually do if you really, really want to fine tune your system. But all in all, the simple install out of the box, you're going to know it was a big difference. So there's really no big crazy reason to have to actually, like, you know, hack it to like crazy levels. So, I mean, you really don't need to worry about it that much. Just find out install box, you're good to go. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that Apache is grabbing the correct values for the IP. And we're going to go over that real quick so you know exactly how to do that. Okay, uh, I was definitely not correct about the mod. It was not mod QoS. I don't know why I was thinking mod QoS, but anyway, it is in fact mad or path. That is the mod we want to install into 
Apache. Um, just for the sake of keeping this video shorter, just because people have been saying, you know, your videos are getting very, very long. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this up. So if you want to pause the video and copy and paste this, you can also see about getting this posted onto the community forums as well under the video. So you can just copy and paste this stuff. But but this is really all you'd have to do. You just run through it, install, making sure you do things to WHM as I mentioned in the very very first video, because CPanel likes to do stuff their way. And by enabling all this you would get the real IP being passed through. Then you just do some updates. Uh, you can Ideally you'd want to do this before um, installing Nginx just because. Uh, if you did in fact install Nginx first it doesn't really quite matter. Just install stuff, restart the services, you're good to go. Either way it works. So really really simple and once you're done you can have a very nice setup with a reverse proxy taking all the hits, Apache running back end, you know, you're caching the files, you're getting the real IPs, Apache can't be hit by, you know, slow iris or anything like that. So, for how quick and simple it is, it's like maybe a 15 minute setup, if that. Um, if you have any questions, you know, hit us up on the forums, click the link right below the video, um, hit the subscribe button, we've got other videos coming out. Um, don't forget, the kittens do like catnip, and you know that's about it so I'm gonna leave this video as close any other questions comments or crazily concerns let me know